Well, the guy who knows more than we do. <laughs> uh, well, that's for sure. <laughs> is uh, Troy Rank uh, from the Denver Post, the Broncos beat writer. And he joins us on the phone, uh, as he does most mornings here on the yeah. Orange and Blue Review on Denver 7. Troy, good morning. Morning, guys. How are you? We're doing good. How are you doing? We're good, man. It's Victory Monday again, right? I mean, uh, that's all that counts, isn't it? Yeah, interesting game. As you guys said, they won ugly. They haven't done this much, if at all, during the Peyton Manning era. So it's a different time for the Broncos, but uh, they're winning, which is what they keep stressing. Yeah, it's, it's tough to imagine a team. What did they have? You know, three turnovers yesterday and still won the thing. Right, because they got three turnovers, too. Yes, I mean, true. Chris Harris Jr., Brandon Marshall picking off passes uh, when they needed it. But, Troy, let me ask you this question. When you look at Peyton's numbers, uh, just take it totally out of context on any given Monday and say 14 for 20, 173 yards, zero touchdown passes, two picks. Uh, you're thinking about a loss in general, aren't sure. you? Oh, yeah. I mean, the first time they had won a game when he didn't play particularly well was last week against Kansas City. Uh, so this marks two games in a row where they've won, where he hasn't been at his best. You know, in a, in a lot of ways, that's a good sign. Eventually, they're going to need him to, in one of those games, whether that's this weekend in San Diego or at Cincinnati or a playoff game, that he will have to probably carry the day again. But the idea that they can win without him being at his best is a much better feeling because it was early in the season. If he started to struggle, you could just sense the doom. Yeah. They, yeah. they couldn't they win without him playing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and now they're more multifaceted. You know what's funny, though, is the fact that uh, when Peyton you know, throws all these touchdown passes and, and we barely win, we're like, oh, gosh, we've got to run the football to compliment Peyton. Now we're running the football. And people uh, are kind of like, well, what's wrong with Peyton? Is he, yeah, is he getting right. old? I mean, that pass to Emmanuel Sanders down the field he was short. Uh, the two interceptions. Is there something wrong with Peyton? Troy, do you think there's something wrong with Peyton? Or is he kind of, you know, just struggling to kind of uh, deal with this, this new approach to offense? Well, I think you hit on it. It's two things. One, he is a rhythm quarterback. And it's so much different than how he's been playing here where – you know, he's throwing six, seven passes in a drive. Now you see him throwing 20 passes in a game and, you know, five passes in a quarter. That's different for him. So he is a rhythm quarterback. And that affects him. Kansas City, the weather was an issue. Yesterday it wasn't. So it's a little bit of a concern and a thing you can't discount. It's he's 38 years old. He's an older <laughs> player. And you saw this with Drew Brees this season. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason you don't see a bunch of 40-year-old quarterbacks. It's a tough position to play. The body, you know, father time remains undefeated. So it bears watching. You know, but I think for now, at least through two weeks, it's not a much it's not enough of a sample size to say it's his body's betraying him. Uh, it's more of an issue of it's been such a jarring adjustment in their offensive philosophy. Obviously if they go to San Diego in perfect weather and he's unable to make the throws, then yeah, then that becomes a question that is he dealing with something physically. As far as we know, he's not. Yeah. It, one of the positives, though, yesterday, the Bills never got a hand on him. No sacks. Yeah, yeah, and see, that's, that's part of the epiphany they had in St. Louis. Is that day, not only was it their worst offensive performance of the season, Peyton Manning, maybe for the first time since he's been a Bronco, he was feeling pressure that wasn't there. You know, he was getting rid of the ball. Uh, he was faster than even he wanted to. It just he didn't look like himself. So... Part of the thing is protect him more, run the ball more, keep him out of harm's way, because if they are going to win, he's going to be part of it. But the one Super Bowl he won with the Colts, his Colts team at the end of that season and through the playoffs ran the ball well. And so, you know, you talk about the yeah. Star Wars numbers. His Star Wars numbers got the Colts there, but at the very end, you know, in the playoffs, the Colts magically started stopping the run, and they started running the ball well. Yeah, I mean, you, you look familiar. at throughout history – uh, the teams that have won Super Bowls is, I mean, we talk about it all the time. The formula is good quarterback, gr a good running game, good defense. great defense. But, yeah. you know, Peyton, listening to him talk last night, um, Troy, I mean, he said, I've broken a lot of records uh, due to playing for a long time. I don't need to break or set another record. Talking about the 51 straight games with a touchdown pass is important to win tonight. Being able to score touchdowns in the red zone as opposed to field goals, that's important. And they gave the ball – that's a C.J. Anderson. He scores three touchdowns. When you get inside the 10, you've got to be able to run the football at that point. Well, and they have. I think what's hurt Manning more than anything there is no Julius Thomas. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. Julius Thomas leads the NFL, or it did going into yesterday, with nine red zone touchdowns. So they miss Julius Thomas in the red zone. They don't miss him necessarily in this new offense because of the way Virgil Green blocks. 
but they miss him there. And you're right. It, to be able to grind out tough yards inside the 10, especially inside the 5, against a very good defensive line, that was impressive. Their overall numbers weren't real impressive on the ground, at least in terms of yards per attempt. But to be able to say, we're going to run, you know we're going to run and still get your, your running back in the end zone, that was impressive. Yeah, we're looking at the, some of the stats, Juwan uh, uh, Thompson, and if you put C.J. with them together, had 121 yards on 25 carries. That's not, like, awe-inspiring. No, and one but of them was a 47-yard, right? right? So, And it produced right. three Almost touchdowns. Almost half that came on one, to on one run by Juwan Thompson, so there were a lot of short runs in there. Yeah, well, look, a lot, a lot of little two ones. Two and three yarders. Exactly. I don't think, I don't think uh, Troy, and this is my personal opinion, I think if we need to depend on Peyton Manning and we're behind, Peyton Manning will come through. Like, it, like, like his old self. I think that you get up on a team 24-3, to 3, you don't need Peyton Manning to throw the ball. You grind it out, you run the football, you win the game. The I clock. think if we yeah. need Peyton in the next three games and in, in playoffs, Peyton Manning will be there. Now that's what you have to trust out if you're a Bronco fan just based on his resume. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, if he goes, again, you go to San Diego in ideal conditions and they're unable to throw at right. all right. after just – riddling the Chargers with passing earlier this season, that would be at least pause for concern. But until then, until they, as you said, until they go to him and say, we're not running, we need you to take over this game, and suddenly he can't, then there's not a concern yet. Until that happens, uh, there's not a concern. At least for me, again, if they get to San Diego, they can't run the ball in perfect weather, ideal conditions, and they're unable to throw, that would be, that would be an issue. Yeah, it would be a red flag, wouldn't it, Troy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and watching that game last night where the Patriots going into San Diego, get down 14-3 to and, and, come back. and come back and win. Yeah. I mean, I, Troy, we talked about this before, going through New England, the number one seed, I mean, as of now, and with three games left, we're going to have to go there, and we're going to have to run the football and play good defense against Tom Brady to, to get to the Super Bowl. A lot of the Broncos fans, I think, were cheering on San Diego, and for, you know, yeah, which is unusual exactly. just because of the Pats situation. And there you can see yeah. the overall standing. So the Pats still uh, first in the AFC, Broncos number two, uh, the s same record there. <sighs> yeah, I wish we could get up on top of that. Yeah, that's a tough place to go win. And they have two of the top five players in football, Brady and Gronkowski. Uh, and their defense is opportunistic. The way Darryl, uh, Darrell Rivas has played the last four or five weeks, actually beginning with the Bronco game, he has just completely taken receivers out of the game. But I will say this, Denver's offensive philosophy right now gives them a chance to win in cold weather right. in New England. Whereas before... After that St. Louis game, I don't think anyone, if you give them truth serum, was going to believe the Broncos could win at New England. At least now they've got a puncher's chance. If exactly. you're going to go there and say, we're going to square up with you, we're going to run the ball, we're going to be physical, at least that would give themselves a chance. Whereas before, I just did not see how they could beat them in New England passing the ball 50 times. Yeah. Exactly right, yeah. Troy. You go there and it's 25 to 30 mile an hour winds and the uh -huh. wind chill is down in the 20s and you got to depend on the passing the game. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, Troy, thanks, man. We appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you this week. Thank you, Troy. Anytime, anytime guys. Take Always care. Always great insight.